Good morning, lovely people. Uh, welcome to today's episode of the Disa Diaries Confessions of a Mad Fat Black Woman. And as you guys already know by now, my name is Sadisa. As you can clearly see, I am a woman of colour, a large lady, and I have, for want of a better word, issues with my mental health. Today's episode is going to be slightly different for you guys today. Um, it's going to be based around my fiancé, who you've seen in the previous video, Simon, the lovely Simon. Um, actually, I was going to do post a different video today, um, which I'd already filmed, um, about um, Simon um, and such, but something has happened and come to light um, that I wanted to kind of raise um, flag about just because it's really important. Um, and yeah, so um, so um, sorry, I found out yesterday that Simon, in my heart, <laughs> um, has been really suffering quite badly in silence with um, depression and got to the point um, yesterday where um, he um, considered hurting himself. I'm sorry. Um, um, Jesus. Ugh. So I just, um, Simon has said that he's going to um, come on and talk to you guys himself. I just want to do a little bit of a thing. First of all, I feel awful <laughs> because I'm doing this channel and talking about myself and my own mental health issues and I feel like I didn't see it. I mean, I knew he was down with work and such. <laughs> But I didn't realise um, how bad it was. I wanted to give you a quick statistic before I push you over to Simon. So I always talk about the one in four. One in four uh, people will deal with mental health issues at some point in their life. But one in five men will consider or will commit suicide. Um due to um, depression and such and I'm going to say this again because because it's really important mental health is a stigma for a reason it's a stigma because it's invisible and it can affect anybody <laughs> even people that you think are happy are in stable relationships and have things going for them it doesn't discriminate, it doesn't care who you are, and it can come at any point. You could be successful and happy on the surface and actually happy in your day-to-day -day life, but depression doesn't care. It will come and knock you down whenever it wants to. So, um, like I say, it's not about me today, so... I'm just going to pass it over to Simon, who has agreed to talk to you guys when he's feeling a bit more up to it today. <laughs> so, I guess, take it away, Simon. Hello. This is encouraging me to make a video today. Um, because... Um, I'm here. Thanks all sorts to do all sorts of things obviously but anybody can suffer from anything and men can suffer from depression and I think I've been in denial for a very long time about that not that men can suffer from depression but that I potentially suffer from depression um, Recently I've had to sort of accept that I am not who I used to be. I am uh, I'm angry all the time. Not necessarily angry, but fed up and, and irritable. Um, with, with just about everybody and that's not just affecting my work life, it's affecting my personal life as well with, with Disa and with Oliver. Um, 
I think. We, in, we, at the moment we're all very quick to blame Covid. Um, it's a very convenient scapegoat for a lot of things. Oh, there was no toilet roll. Covid. Oh, there was a queue in the shops. Covid. You know, all that. My mental health has suffered. And unfortunately, I think Covid has brought it to the fore. Stuck inside, can't go out. Not that I went out a lot anyway, but can't go out. Can't um, socialise. You know, during the first lockdown, um, because obviously nobody knew what was going on in the first lockdown, nobody knew anything. You know, and that was difficult because we were so clueless that I couldn't see Oliver, I couldn't see my son for several weeks, couple, I think it was three or four months, until it sort of calmed down a little bit. And that was hard. Didn't do that on this lockdown. Um, but it just seems to have spiralled on them from there. But I'm not saying that it's, it, you know, COVID causes depression, although it can impact people in a lot of different ways. I just, I think I've been depressed for a very long time. Um, but it's taken a lot for me to realise that actually I am not well. Excuse my black hands, I've been doing DIY today. Sure, decent well. Grouting skills. <laughs> Where are they? Yeah, so she says. Um, You're doing really well. So, this has encouraged me to make this video. It's long and short of it. I have I have not been well. I've not been myself. We already know. I'm sure Disa has mentioned. I know Disa has mentioned that I suffer from Asperger and ADHD and you know, the autistic spectrum. And I'm a very stubborn arse. I'll be the first to admit it. I am a stubborn, cantankerous arse of a man. Nina. She doesn't think so. She's got girlfriend goggles, fiance goggles, or whatever you want to call. But I am. And I don't like to admit when I'm wrong. I don't like to admit when I'm not myself. I just want to get on with it. You know, get on, carry on, deal with it, get on with it. But more recently, things have become more difficult than ever before. It's never been this hard just to simply haul my arse out of bed in the morning. Even on my days off, I cannot, I couldn't give two monkeys about anything. I can't, I don't. It's not that I don't care, because I do care, but it's just, so what? So what? And it's strange because part of Asperger's and ADHD is, uh, and a, a la in certain in some cases, it's, in my case especially, a lack of ability to empathise. So I know, I've learned over 30 years. I have learned how I'm supposed to react to things. Don't always get it right, but I know what's expected of me if someone tells me something particularly devastating, I'm supposed to be upset or mortified or whatever, but even that I can't. You know, my sister died. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? That's, that doesn't really happen to my Hazen flat, that is just an example. But you get my point, I'm sure. I feel like nobody's listening. Ever. And I know that's not, your logical, you know, voice in my head knows that that's not the case. People are listening. People are, 
are, are making great pains to listen. But it just feels like nobody's listening. Makes you feel very isolated in an already isolating situation. Um, I probably wasn't going to say this, but I had some very dark thoughts yesterday. Very dark thoughts that I would never have acted on. I don't think I would have acted on. I certainly did not wake up that morning with the intention of it and it was a very fleeting thought but it was a thought nonetheless and later that day I, I confessed to Disa and to my mother to, in all fairness had Disa not dragged it out of me I don't think I would have told her either She does. She has a habit of dragging things into me. She has a habit of dragging me kicking and screaming into the 21st century. I'm not very happy about it, but there it is. Very old fashioned. I didn't want to admit it. I don't want to admit it. For no other reason, not for the, the man up. Not for the I'm better than this, which quite frankly is bullshit. Um, but for the simple fact is that I thought, I think, I believe that there is so much going on with everybody else that my problems were not conducive to everybody else's health, shall we say. You know, not my Tisa's, not my mum's, not my pals, not Oliver's especially. But having had a very frank open conversation with Disa and my mum <laughs> and after this video goes out I'm sure I'll be having a couple more very frank and open conversations with people um, I do feel slightly better I would be lying if I was to sit here and say I've had a, I've had a chat I feel great everything's back to normal it, it isn't it really isn't. It, it won't be for a very, very long time, I don't think. Because this is, as I, as I mentioned before a few minutes ago, I think this has been building for a very long time. And it's nobody's fault. You know, you can't... You know, it's, not a, it's not COVID. It can't pass from one person to the next in the same way that it cannot be cured. In the same way, it takes time and effort not just on a person who's healing you a doctor or whoever but on my part as well I have to be open to the idea of being helped and for a lot of men especially there is this stigma whereby we aren't we, we don't get depression we don't have mental health issues. We are men. Till that I say fuck off. We are human. We get ill. We have issues. And if you need help, never be afraid to ask for it. Never. It is difficult to ask for it. It will probably be the most difficult thing that some of us ever have to do. Like swallowing bloody razor blades, as my mother would say. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's 
horrifying to think that your entire world could come crashing down around you over us. But it won't. I can assure you that the minute you tell somebody that you've got depression, the sun will still rise in the morning and set in the evening, as it will every day. I now have to go out on a very difficult journey, shall we say, just to get myself better, and I will have to do a lot in order to achieve that. Lisa will obviously help, my mother will help, Oliver will help, and there'll be others who will help me as well. They may have to drag me kicking and screaming blue murder, but by God, I will get there. I will get there. And so will everybody else, as long as we can have the conversation. If we can't talk about it, we're doomed. And I have just realised that I have referenced Dad's army in a Scottish accent saying, We're doomed. We're doomed. I'm cutting that out of this video. No, you're not. Um, that Everything was absolutely stays horrible. Everything stays horrible. That's the one of the Rita Diaries. Nothing is edited or filtered. Christ, I should never have said that. This video has been very difficult to make and I am sorry to people watching it if it's been a bit haphazard and, and rambling. You listen to me all the time, I ramble all the time. Listen to she rambles apparently. I, I, I watch your videos and I don't feel that she rambles as such. But I think for those of us out there with these conditions, Depression, anxiety, autism, all these things, and more. The list goes on. The list, will, the list goes on and on, as Tisa rightly says. If we can have the conversation with each other first, because if we can't talk to each other, who the fuck can we talk to? One nutter to another. Why not? Huh? Everyone's a little bit mental. Yeah. We're all a little crazy around here. That was crazy as a guy in the background lighting off fireworks. I think I can't hear a bloody can. At least I hope we can hear it. Otherwise, that's a, that's a sign of mental illness I really don't want to talk about on this video. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, I've had a very difficult past couple of days. You got through. I've got through, and, and I've, it's been difficult before then and now, and it will be difficult after. If anybody wants to talk to me about it, drop a message on the DC Diaries page, and, and I will message back. Deesa's sign off has probably never been truer than at this moment in the world and yes it may be cliche but it is okay not to be okay preach but let's be honest okay is boring no one wants to be okay so let's not be okay together and then together we can be bloody brilliant I'm gonna go now because I've been rambling now for about 15 minutes I think I can't see the time on that phone but I I shall uh, sign off and I'm sure Disa will make a, a, an end to the video goodbye just now so I hope that's explained things a little bit more with me guys. I thought it was important that you heard a man talking about this just because there is, is difficult um, for men 
with mental health issues just because of the toxic um, masculinity thing and such and the whole thing of men feeling that they have to provide and also a man himself is quite old-fashioned in that sense he uh, feels an enormous amount of pressure to provide for our family even though he does and he just feels like he needs to do more sometimes and I know that his job com is very stifling for him and he feels trapped and he feels like he's not going anywhere I never want him to feel this way again and I'll do anything I can to try and take that pain away so we'll be making steps and such and talking about it more and going down the doctor's bath and everything else that we can do I just wanted to address the men in the in, in that are watching my videos I know that a lot of people have been watching and a lot of people have been getting in contact with me um the majority of the women which is great I know I'm not, I'm not stopping any women from getting in contact with me and such please feel free to but recently obviously I'll never name anybody that gets in contact with me and wants to talk to me about the issues and such but recently I've had a couple of men that have come and um, asked to speak to me um, and they've said that they uh, it's really helpful to have videos and such to the feeling that they're not alone and it's harder for them as men to open up about this stuff you can always talk to me I know it's really stupid because obviously I didn't even my own bloody fiance and I didn't even but you can talk to me if you need to but I just wanted to address the men that are watching this video and actually just everybody, anybody that's watching this video it is okay not to feel okay your feelings are valid you're not overreacting you're not being oversensitive you're not less of a man, less of a woman, less of a person for feeling the way that you feel but it is important to know that you are not alone and even if you feel like you're alone in your life, that you don't have anybody else around, I'm telling you that you're not alone. I'm telling you, you're not. There will be somebody there. There's, is, there's another way. There's more to it than that. And I'm here, and I'm telling you on the internet, crying like an idiot, that I feel it too. So... Please don't feel like you have to suffer in silence and suffer alone. Please always feel free to get in touch with me just to have a chat if you need to. I'm always there if anybody needs to talk. But as I always say, I'm not a professional. So I will leave numbers of people below in the description. Contact groups, professionals, people that you can get in touch with if you really feel that you are suffering. I want to remind everybody as well, as always I say in every video, but it's, tr it's true. It may be cliche, but it's okay not to be okay. You guys have a good day. Bye.